question that we are going to be asking is that in this case is a with respect to Deccan basalt comprising all three of them. The characteristic of Deccan basalt, the origin of Deccan basalt and the features associated with Deccan basalt, all three of them combined. Coming to it, the question is going to be discuss the origin of Deccan basalt, that means Deccan basalt is going to be our key topic. That's one. And what we are going to be concerned with is origin of it, characteristic of it, characteristics of it, and at the same time features associated with it. Now to begin with, uh, this answer must go on to begin with a distribution. That is, uh, on the map of India, this distribution must be there. So, that is what exactly that you have to explain. This is the distribution of taken basalt and in some patches here and there as well. That is how we have to explain this part. Once this part is over, of course you have to write something out that Deccan basalts are going to be coterminous with them. With the whole of the basaltic formation that we are going to be having in India. It is, a, the, it is a associated with Maharashtra state. And certain aspect associated with it, how much has been the thickness. <clears throat> so all in all, it goes on to be something like some 20,000 feet thickness of uh, these basaltic corruptions that has taken place in some parts of the country. So, and that goes on to be a component of it. The thickness of the basaltic layers are going to be more on the western side and less on the eastern side. These Deccan basalts uh, originated out of uh, three models. Uh, the first has been uh, what we are going to call it as intracontinental intra rifting. What happened was at that point of a time, This is how India was going to be attached and as India got itself separated, as India got itself separated all along this line, that is the dot lines, this led to eruption of lava. It was obvious that is as the fragmentation took place and as there was a crack formation, then uh, just beneath this crack. Uh, the pressure got itself lowered and lowering of this pressure meant that the melting point was also lowered and the, lo and the lowering of this melting point meant that the rocks melted at a lower temperature. And then it was out of this eruption that layer by layer deposition of magma, sorry lava was put up in this place. That is what we are going to be calling as intracontinental rifting. The second had been India's passes over Reunion Island. Now, if you are going to consider that is a
that is India after fragmenting started moving northward so this is where India came then this is where India came it started moving northward now in this northward passage it passed over a mantle plume that was called as a hot spot this was this may have been here or any of these places where it where, where it was now this is uh, where the south pole of uh, the world at that point of time was uh. so as india started moving northward in this case uh, the that is two things happened that is the crack that was existing that was in the form of narmada son damodar rift valley that crack was of course it was getting itself fragmented so the crack was there through that crack and through certain type of openings uh, a lot of lava outpouring took place so there was already some amount of lava the eruption that took place here at this point of time some amount of eruption took place here and as it started moving northward the eruption started getting itself in action in motion and then there was another bout of eruption that took place this was going to be the second model associated with it the third has been a that of a meteoritic impact now that's the present position of india that's the present position of india and that is where bombay high is going to be that's the place roughly around this place so as india had started moving here northward and had already collided with india and established almost or was in the process of it eh? that is when it there was a huge meteoritic impact that took place eh? what this meteoritic impact did was that it created a gaping hole in the earth eh? and from that from that hole a lot of eh, lava came out onto the surface eh? as this lava started coming out onto the surface it started getting itself deposited here now not only that the lava came out eh, at that point of a time there were a lot of other events that started taking place eh. lot of other events started taking place and that was eh, a tsunami uh, accompanied it eh, a lava eruption erupted it eh, accompanied it eh, and this lava came to fill the whole of the deccan cyclones eh. that means eh, india after getting itself fragmented from africa australia moved northward there was a volcanic eruption then then it moved over union there was again volcanic eruption and then again when it it was in the process of collision with uh, with uh, the whole of uh, eurasia there was going to be another volcanic eruption that took place so there were three layers of volcanic activity that were deposited over india now no con no country no continent has passed through so much amount of a travel in this case and all of these we come to know of it largely because all of this them led to the evolution of different type of a magma so this led to the evolution of different type of a magmatic deposit for example one of the uh, one of this lava deposit that we going to be finding it is going to be neph lenitic magma now the nephelentic magma may have derived by the partial melting in the small in the presence of small amount of water it is associated with the deccan traps and it is associated with a partial melting in the presence of small amount of water and that is going to be at pretty depth 80 to 100 km so there was a different type of magma that evolved that means uh, it may have been since it is going to about 80 to 100 uh, kilometers uh, of depth uh, that may have been because of intra continental drifting that may have been the reason behind it the second type of magma in this case has been quartz quartz tholitic composition quartz tholitic composition now this was derived by the partial melting of peridotite peridotite is what constitutes the asthenosphere 
and a, because of the lowering of a pressure over periodite, such type of melting may have taken place. So that again goes on to point out to the fact, to the fact that it was, it may have been because of intracontinental rifting, because it is made of a partial melting of the periodite materials. The third has been alkali olivine basalt and nephelinitics of a younger age. That is alkali olivine basalt and uh, nephelinitics of younger age. Now they have uh, they have originated because of uh, uh, from garnet pyrotite at high pressure uh, along tectonically active belts in West India. That means it was garnet and pyrotite. Both of them melted and they originated from again from Western India. That means from this portion. This was the portion from where they originated. Indeed, we do going to find some amount of evidence with respect to meteorotic impact because that uh, there are going to be some places where a lot of shocked quartz grains are found. And such type of uh, shocked quartz grains uh, are found only in those areas, only in those regions uh, where meteorotic impact had taken place. Uh, and uh, the one that is going to be passes over reunion, that means hotspot type of deposits. Uh, so and they go on to show two different type of composition in this case. Uh, so this is how exactly one over another has been laid down. The feature, I mean the geological feature other than that had been one. That is, these deposits were let down layer after layer. That means uh, they are going to be called as, by, by the name of traps. Trap means uh, one volcanic eruption took place, then there was another, then there was another, then there was another. Now all the succeeding uh, lava flow that took place that was getting shorter and shorter and shorter. That is, the first one must have been extensive. The second one was not so extensive. The third one was even less extensive. The fourth one was even less extensive. So what happened was that uh, it led to the evolution of trap step type of deposits. It is this step type of deposits that led to the evolution of certain type of trap features. That's going to be feature number one associated with it. The second feature is going to be that, uh, that is on the surface it goes on to be rolling. That means, this is the type of a, a feature that you are going to find on the surface of Deccan basalt. That is going to be rolling in nature. The third is that it goes on to find, it goes on to have good number of mesa and booties. Meaning that the feature is going to be like that, that is going to be a mesa, it is again a mesa, it is again going to be a booty of sorts in this case and all of them going to be having a lava capping. That means the topmost portion is made of a lava flow. Of course, it may have been a different case that in between there is a river that now goes on to flow. But such type of features are going to be common in this region and they are going to be very, very, uh, very, very picturesque as a well in this place here. So nearly the whole of Maharashtra plateau is formed of plateau basalt, uh, which gave rise to a rolling uh, plain uh, with intervening uh, shallow valleys uh, and flanking each of the three river valleys like Godavari, Bhim and Krishna, they are flat topped but steep sided low hills, flat topped but steep sided low hills uh, and in between flows the Krishna, in between goes on to flow the Bhim, in between goes on to flow the Godavari and that is the way. The typical characteristic is therefore is going to be made of rolling hills and plains, uh, mesas and bootes uh, and so on. That is uh, going to be all about uh, the Deccan basalt, the origin of the Deccan basalt, then uh, the geological characteristic of it and the geomorphic characteristic of it.